Hi everyone. So, I hope you're doing good. I am at my parents' house right now visiting. In this little area I've used in some videos before is like a little wooden desk area that's built into their um, den or family area. So before I even get started, um, I'm going to have some trident layers fruit bone. I just ate lunch and I think one, this will make really good sound, and two, I have a bad taste <laughs> in my mouth. Okay, so, um, I came down here to visit my parents, and another thing is someone hit my car yesterday, so I was going to do an estimate done for it, and fortunately for that person, um, it's going to cost a lot of money, so I had come down for that, um, also just to visit. Um, and when I got here, I was kind of flustered because I went straight to the <clears throat> car place to get it, get the estimate. And, um, they were telling me all this stuff that, all these other things that were wrong. And then, also I was really hungry and I hadn't unpacked the car yet. So when I got here, I was just kind of frazzled and, um, my mom very sweetly had, um, what she usually does is lay out stuff that she wants me to have, so whenever I come here, there's usually like some coupons or a cookbook or something laying on my bed, and this time, there was some cookie cutters and a giant wooden rolling pin, and then this sweet little book, which I thought I would read to you guys. Um, and I have never read it either. I just kind of skimmed through it. And, um, so we will discover this book together. But it says it's one of Dolly Parton's Imaginary Library. And I don't know if you know it or not, but, um, Dolly Parton does great things for children. And she has, like, a book program so that children will have books. So she's really great. And, um, this is called... Otis by Lauren Long. So you've got a little cow in the front and a tractor. I'll read you a little, read a little bit about her imaginary library. It says, imagine if every preschool child received a book in his or her home every month for the first five years of life. Imagine the excitement those children would feel receiving those gifts. Imagine if this 60-volume library was absolutely free to the children and their families. Now imagine that this is a reality. Dolly Parton's Imagination Library is a unique program that began in Dolly's home county in 1996. It mails a new age-appropriate book into the homes of children every month from birth to age five. Dolly wanted her program to be a personal gift for all children that goes directly to them. Dolly's Imagination Library is designed to inspire the love of reading and learning in children by spending time with family and friends, sharing these wonderful books together. Dolly understands that reading is the key to a strong education and that a child's imagination is the corner, is the center of his or her dreams and creativity. By combining the two, this program inspires children to dream more, learn more, care more, and be more. And then it just goes on to explain some more. So, as you can see, that's a really great thing that she does. Okay, Otis. By Lauren Young, or Lauren Wong. It 
There once was a friendly tractor. His name was Otis. And every day, Otis and his farmer worked together, taking care of the farm they called home. Otis liked to work. But after working hard all day, Otis was ready to unwind and play. He would ride the rolling hills and skirt mud pond down by the corn. He would leapfrog bales of hay and explode through haystacks. On occasion, he would chase a rabbit or play ring around the rosy with the ducks to the sound of his steady put puff puffy chuff. And sometimes at the end of the day, he would just sit under the apple tree and watch the farm below. Every night, tired but happy, Otis would put puff into the little stall in the barn that was all his. But one night, when Otis was fast asleep, the farmer brought a beautiful baby calf into the barn. The calf bawled and bawled for her mother, but when the sleepy sound of a soft put puff 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 puffy chuff came from the next stall, the scared little calf stopped bawling and drifted off to sleep. Here's the calf. From that day on, the calf started following the little tractor wherever he went. Put, puff, putty, chuff. He followed, she followed him over the rolling hills and down by Mud Pond. She was right behind him, leapfrogging bales of hay. And the calf made their games of ring around the rosy all the better. Sometimes, at the end of the day, the two of them would just sit together under the apple tree and watch the farm below. Otis loved his little calf, and the little calf loved Otis. Well, these are really good illustrations. Then one day, the farmer surprised everyone with a brand new yellow tractor. Time to move out, Otis, the farmer said. He took Otis out of the little stall in the barn that was all his and parked him back behind the barn. Then he backed the big yellow tractor into the stall next to the little calf. Oh, that's sad. But the little calf didn't like the big yellow tractor. He had a deep, rumbling snore that shook the stall when he slept. There was no one to purr the little calf gently to sleep. No one to spend her days with. And Otis? Otis could not even see his farm as the weeds began to cover his tires. His friend often sat with him, but she could not get him to play like the old days. It was early summer when the farmer discovered a poster. Who has the prettiest calf in the land? Judges will decide at the county fair and award a fancy blue ribbon to the winner. The farmer knew the answer. He would show the little calf. But on the morning of the fair, the little calf was nowhere to be found. She had wandered down to Mud Pond by the cornfield to cool off. When she waded into the muddy water, her feet sank. With every step, she sank deeper and deeper and deeper. The little calf was stuck in mud pond. Get the hands, the farmer shouted when he saw her. 
All the farm hands came running with their ropes, but the more they towed, the more stuck the calf got. Get the big yellow tractor, the farmer shouted. He can save her. But the big tractor just scared the little calf. She sank in deeper and deeper. Nearby farmers began to gather. Then call Fire Chief Douglas and the fire truck, the farmer shouted. They can save our little calf. But the sight of the big red fire truck startled the little calf in even deeper. The farmer was fit to be tied. If the farmhands and the big tractor and even Fire Chief Douglas and his fire truck couldn't save the little calf, who could? Suddenly, the little calf's ears perked up. Over the hum of the, gra ga uh, the growing crowd, there came a faint sound in the distance. A soft, rhythmic purr. Put, puff, putty, chuff. The crowd turned and looked. The sound became louder. Put, puff, putty, chuff. And all at once, Otis put, puffed from around the barn. He turned and headed straight toward Mud Pond. There's Otis. Otis put Puff down the rolling hill and pulled up next to the muddy water's edge. The calf heard her friends puttering, purr, and bold. It was something like a hello. Then, to the sound of his gentle chuff and the amazement of all of the people in the crowd, Otis slowly began to circle the pond. He circled and he circled and the little calf turned and turned, never taking her eyes off her friend. With each ring Otis made around the pond, the muddy grip loosened until the calf was able to stumble out of the pond on her own. The two friends had found each other again. Otis led the calf right down the dusty road toward the village, and everyone threw flowers as they went, following them into town. It looked like a happy parade. No one needed a fancy blue ribbon to tell them that the calf was a special calf. Otis was a special tractor and the two of them were special friends. From that day on, the farmer discovered that with Otis's puttering purr beside the chicken coop, his chickens laid more eggs. At milking time, with Otis's gentle chuff nearby, his cows produced more milk. On occasion, Otis even got to join the farmer and the big yellow tractor out in the fields. But often, at the end of the day, Otis would just sit with his friend under the apple tree and watch the farm below the end. That was a sweet little book. This says... Oh, I don't know who that is. Well, it looks like maybe this was a gift for um, a student of my mom's cousin, but I don't, I don't know if she wants me to use it or she just wanted me to look at it, but we'll see. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you soon. Bye.